And we're done with our basic type layout. We're gonna fix some things later, but for now it's time to bring in some images and learn about frame and shape tools. So here's our document so far, and here's the model we're referencing. Time to bring in the photo. So go to File, Place, and Browse to your photo. Then click Open to drop it in. We'll take the loaded cursor to the top left corner where we want the image to appear and click. Boom, it's there. But it's big. <laughs> it's actual size, so we'll need to resize it, but it's not quite that simple. Notice if I take the selection tool and I start to drag, the image does not resize. It gets cropped. So you want to think of this box as the frame that your picture looks through, sort of like a window frame. So before we get started, let's flip this image horizontally so the subject will be facing the text rather than looking off the page. To do this, select the image and go to Object, Transform, and Flip Horizontal. And we'll just grab this image and drag it back into position now that it's flipped. But once again, how do we resize this image? Well, if you want to resize the whole image, hold down the Control key on PC or the Command key on Mac. This will resize the whole image when you drag, but it will distort unless you hold down the Shift key as well. So now I'm holding down Control Shift or Command Shift on Mac to resize in proportion. Now to move your image around inside the frame, just click on the circle icon and drag it around. Now I'm going to drag the frame itself to fit inside the area we've marked out to the red bleed line. Now, what if we want to resize the image inside the frame while keeping the frame the same size? For example, I'd like to make his image a little smaller here. Well, we need a different tool for that. So choose your Direct Select tool instead of your Select tool. Now, with your Direct Select tool, click on the image. And notice that you can see where the edge of the image is behind the frame just grab that handle and hold your shift key down to resize it within the frame. And with a little more tweaking, we have it where we want it. That seems like a lot of work. Well, there's an easier way to do it. So let's delete this image and do it an easier way. This time, we're going to create a frame for this image first in the exact place that we want it. To do this, choose the rectangle frame here, then we'll drag out the exact area where we want our image. Remember to go all the way to the bleed line. Now, go to File and Place to browse for your image just like you did before. This time, when you click Open, boom, it appears inside that frame. So we're many steps ahead of where we were the last time we did it. We just need to adjust it now, which is much easier. So first let's flip this image horizontally again. So to do that, we go to Object, Transform, and flip horizontal. And now we're gonna let InDesign do some adjustments for us. An easy way is to right click on your image and select Fitting and then go to Content Aware Fit. This is close to where we want it, and we can just tweak from here using the tools you've learned. For example, I might want our subject to be a little bigger or smaller in the frame, so I go to my Direct Select tool, hold down the Shift key, and drag the image.
And we're done, so much easier. So let's recap what we've learned and you can screenshot this if you want to. This document will be linked to in the description below, but when you want to place or move around an image, we use the selection tool and the direct select tool. The selection tool does these things, and this is how you do them right over here. The direct select tool does these things, and this is how you do them. And then the quick steps for using the frame tool to place an image are here. And now we'll add the photo credit. So we'll pull down a guide first. And then write, courtesy of Witherspoon. In Franklin Gothic Book Italic so it stands apart from the column text, and 10 points. And now we can actually align our credit for the pull quote on the same guide. It's just nice to align things across a page. Okay, now let's add the other graphic elements on the page and learn about shapes, lines, polygons, and stars. First, we're gonna create the elements on this page that appear outside the margin lines. For example, the pagination and the name of the publication at the bottom, sometimes the date appears there as well. These elements are called the folio. The line across the bottom here is called a rule. And the color bar across the top has no technical name in English that I could ever find, but in Spanish it's called Zocalo Superior, which means literally translated top socket, but we'll just call it a color bar. And let's start there. To create that red bar across the top, select the rectangle tool here, then click and drag from the bleed line in the corner across the page. We'll stay outside that margin. And to turn the bar red, we could double click the fill icon at the bottom of the tool panel, or we could grab that swatch we created before by going to Window, Color, Swatches. There's our swatch. Now the color matches our headline exactly. We want to make sure there's no stroke around this box, which would look tacky. So with the box selected, click on the stroke icon and the apply color box. When you hold the cursor down, you get the option to apply none. And now we have no border around the box. Notice our photo needs to be pulled up to the red color bar and we'll use the selection tool to do that. Next, we'll create the line across the bottom called the rule. Select the line tool here, then start your line under the margin at the bleed line on the right and drag across the page. Remember to hold the shift key down to keep a straight line. To make the line thicker, we can increase the point size in the control bar, which also allows you to change the pattern of lines, etc. To make the line red, go to the swatch palette to click the swatch. Easy, right? Now let's create that red square at the bottom with the page number inside. So select the rectangle tool and this time hold the shift key down to draw a perfect square all the way down to the bleed line. and choose the type tool to type a number inside. Now we can center align that number and set whatever font, size, and color we want. And I'm just tapping the baseline option to nudge the number down.
And now we'll type the name of the publication to complete the folio area. If you have a large document and you want these elements to appear on every page with automatic pagination, you'll need to create something called master pages, which are covered in a separate video linked below. And we're done with the graphics on this page. But here's a quick note on shapes, polygons, and stars. If you hold down the rectangle tool, you'll see the ellipse tool and the polygon tool options. Choose the ellipse tool. This tool draws ovals, or it will draw a perfect circle if you hold the shift key down at the same time. Now let's create a polygon and star. So select the polygon tool and drag out the shape. I'm holding the shift key down here too. This is the default shape, but if I go back and double click the polygon tool, a dialog box comes up so we can change the number of sides and even create a star inset. Cool. So now we've laid out some images and some type on the page, but the next step involving type and alignment is going to mark you as a true professional. So in some ways, it's most important. We're going to kern our headline, justify our type, balance our columns, set hyphenation, and remove rivers, widows, orphans, and runs which sounds like a Dickens novel, right? But it's not, <laughs> so let's go.